Welcome to the next video in the Suggestion App course. This is a complete course where we'll build a .NET 6 Blazor server application with MongoDB from the ground up. There are three things you need to know before we get started. First, this is part of a series, and this isn't the first video in the series. If you're just starting out, you should check out the playlist that's linked in the description to start from the first video in the series. Second, this course is actually a paid course. MongoDB sponsored it so you can put the videos on YouTube for free. Check out the link in the description to sign up for MongoDB Atlas for free to thank them if you haven't already. Third, you can also buy this course on imtimcorey.com. The link is in the description. Buying this course will get you all the lessons right away, the source code for each lesson, a certificate of completion, offline access, and more. It also helps sponsor more free content. The video will be the same as it is on YouTube, so feel free to watch the free version if you want to. Okay, let's jump into today's video. Note there may be more than one lesson in this video, since some lessons are short. Now let's create a suggestion detail page. So let's right click on pages, we'll say add new component, and we can call this suggestion details or just details. Let's call this just details. And in here, we have to make some changes. First of all, let's get rid of this H3 here. And up at the top, we'll say a page directive. This allows us to navigate directly to it. So details, but then I'm gonna pass in that uh, ID. So remember back with our, our index page, we have that navigation at the very bottom here, navigate to the details page and pass in the suggestion ID. So this mirrors that path and this is a parameter. So we have to put that into our code in just a minute, but we're also going to bring in using injection, we're going to bring in the I suggestion data, suggestion data. And we'll also bring in the navigation manager called nav manager. And then in our code, what we'll do is we're going to have a parameter that matches this. So we're gonna have a parameter and we'll say public string ID and we'll have a get and a set. So it's actually public because of the fact that other pages are gonna to wanna to access this variable. That's why it's public, everything else can and should be private. So we'll have a private suggestion model. We'll call it suggestion. And then we're gonna have our protected override on initialized async. And that just borked up all of my code. That's awesome. What it did notice is it took away my end curly brace. That's interesting. So that should clear that up. These things are having a little bit of a trouble. They're hopefully gonna get these things uh, resolved soon. But, um, but yeah, is what it is for now. So on initialize async, and we're just gonna wait for us to make a, you know some kind of call in here. So let's say suggestion equals await suggestion data dot get suggestion we're going to pass in our id and that will give us back the one suggestion that you have selected so i guess it's all the data for that specific suggestion so that's pretty much all we have to do in this method we'll come back once we have authentication and do things like get the user and who that is and so on but that's pretty much all we have to do here now you need to create a couple more methods, private void close page. So we're gonna have that X in the upper right hand corner. Well, when you click on that X, we wanna have the nav manager navigate to the home page, which is just the, the slash. So the other thing I wanna do is we have code from the, the main page, the index page, let's go back here 
and get the upvote top and bottom. Okay, this code right here for top and bottom, we're gonna grab these methods and we're gonna paste them in. Now, there are some slight tweaks. We don't have to pass in which suggestion it is because we already know what suggestion it is. It's the only one loaded. But these will now say click to uh, versus the vote count and up votes versus up vote. So that's it for the methods we need for this page. It's a pretty simple page so far. We're gonna make it more complex as we add other, um, as we add authentication and some admin only stuff. But for now, this is all we need for this page. So we can come up here and start writing our HTML, H1. And this is gonna be suggestion details. And then after that, we're gonna have a div. And inside that div, we'll have another one. This is going to uh, break apart or kind of shrink down our what's available on a screen. So it'll wrap things and make things look nice. So if in here I have if suggestion is not null. So as long as you have a suggestion that's you know a real suggestion, you, you link to one that's correct, then let's start showing some details. We'll have a div inside that div. We'll have another div. And of course, we've got the problem of not wanting to close things out for us. So let's, um, let's close these out properly. So that one closes that one and let's tab these back. Okay. So we have, uh, two levels in, let's go a third level in. Like so, and in this third level, this is going to have the vote up. Whoops. This is going to be the, the vote up option, which we don't um, have that method yet because of the fact we don't have authentication. But inside here, we're going to have the same text as we have on this page for our um, right here. This text right here. This is for the vote up or so the vote upvote top text, upvote bottom text, and that carrot. So let's grab that and paste that in place. It's the same code as before. And then outside of this, we're gonna have another div and let's close this out properly. Let's format it. And then inside of here, we're gonna have a div that has at suggestion dot date created to string. And we'll format this as month dot day dot year. And it's the two digit month, two digit day and four digit year. And we'll close out of that div. Again, remember the, the divs are being messy when they're inside of an if statement. So just escape out of IntelliSense and that'll fix that. Um, the, the upvote and the downvote are having an error here because of the fact that um, we have get upvote top text. We don't need to pass in an S for top or bottom because of the fact that we already know what suggestion it is. Okay, so that takes care of this section. It will come down one more level and then we'll create another section. So this is again, similar. It's the left hand side of the upvote information. And then we'll have a div on this side. And in this side, we're going to have a bunch of information. First of all, we're gonna have a div with suggestion dot suggestion. And then we'll have another div with 
suggestion.author dot display name. Don't forget the author is a full object. You can't just say author. You have to say the display name of the author. And we can copy this. Just we have to keep doing that uh, div escape. It'll be suggestion dot description. And then we do want to have a another entry below this. And that will be we're going to show off the category they're in. So, whoops. Let's go to the end here. And let's um, div slash div. And in here, we'll say at suggestion dot category dot category name. So we'll have these four things stacked on top of each other on what will be the middle of our our uh, detail page. So with that, I think that's all of the the entries we need there. Then we're going to do is we're going to have the close page. And that will sit in the the right hand side. So we're going to have div slash div escape. And then we'll have button at on click equals close page. It's really nice when you just say the actual thing instead of having the double parentheses and all the rest. So this is just going to be our close page button. It'll be really simple. Um, that's all there is to it is just a little button. And then once we close out of this, we're gonna have one more row that. Um, actually, never mind. We're going to wait on that row until after we start doing our styling because that row will show up only on certain screens. So we'll, we'll do that later. All right. Down here is where we're going to put an if statement. If suggestion, if it's not null, then the suggestion status, oops, dot suggest. No, go away dot suggestion status is not null. So if suggestion is not null and suggestion status is not null, then we want to show off a div. And let's do this. Let's build it outside the if for now and we'll move it into the if. All right, so let's move it into the if later. That way we can have our nice open closing divs like so. Uh, so div, and we'll have another div, and then a third one that we're going to leave alone for now. And then we'll also have another div. And inside that div, yes, these divs are necessary because of styling. So that's why we're, we're kind of nesting these so deeply. It's kind of annoying at times, but it is part of the way we, we style things. Suggestion dot suggestion status dot status name. You want to check that because we're going to have that inside this if statement that says suggestion status is not null. So we have a status name and then we'll have another div. And inside this div, we'll have a um, this is an interesting one. We want to have a suggestion owner notes. So we could just say suggestion dot owner notes. The problem is that these owner notes are going to include some HTML. Specifically, it'll have a link whenever you have completed a suggestion or when we have completed a suggestion. So you suggest we do a video on Redis and I come in through and say, hey, I did that. And I hit market complete and I put the URL of that video so you can go quickly to it and see it. Well, I want that link to actually work and not just be a text entry. But when you display text from a database onto a Blazor page or really into any ASP.NET Core page, when you do so, it's going, going to by default treat it as text, not as HTML. 
And that's a good thing because we don't want to just give the users the ability to write HTML to our pages. That can cause some serious security issues. However, allowing owners to input a URL is a good thing. That's what we want to do. We want that URL display correctly. Therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to say that I want this to be treated not just as text, but as HTML. There's a way of doing that called markup string. So I'm going to cut this out for a minute, leave the at, I'm going to wrap this whole thing in parens, and then I have one more set of parens for a cast to markup string. And we'll cast the suggestion.owner notes to a markup string. And what that will do is it will say, okay, this is actually markup, which it's actually going to treat a lot of it as HTML. It's still going to be safe about it as much as possible, but it's going to treat the HTML inside of it as HTML. So that's what markup string does for us. And that's why we're going to do it. That way the owner can put notes on here if necessary. So with that, we have all of the information we want on this section. So let's cut this out and paste it inside the if statement. Now that, um, now that we're done typing out, we don't have to worry about the, those closing divs not coming through. Okay, so this is only going to show if a suggestion status is not null. So it'll be a, the details of a suggestion. And then below it, there'll be a section that is going to be dedicated to the status of the suggestion if there is one. So this first little bit here, that's just getting a little bit of color we're going to apply. We're going to have different colors associated with different statuses, and that will apply that color in that little section. And then we're going to have the suggestion name, or I'm sorry, the status name as in completed or uh, watching or pending or whatever the status is. And then we'll have our owner notes that might have a little HTML in them down below. That way you can see, oh, it's been completed. And here's Tim's note about it, including the URL to look it up. So that's all the detail page is. Let's see this in action to make sure it works. And how do you get to the detail page? Well, we just click on any of our, our suggestions and it will go to the detail page. So we have our, our index page is going to load for us the, the database. It's being a little bit slow right now. Might need to reboot at some point. But we have our suggestions. Let's click on the fourth suggestion. And it goes to the suggestion detail page. Notice that we have the URL, including that unique identifier. And then we have the, the upvote section here. We have the date it was created. We have the title. We have the uh, person who created it, which remember sample Tim Corey is our user. Then we have the detail or the description. That's the description there. And we have the category. We also have this little button here and it says upcoming. And this is the note for the status. So there's, there's the uh, status and the owner note. So that's the close button right there. If we click that, it closes out and goes back to this main page. Is it pretty yet? Absolutely not. But we actually have content on the page. Our fifth suggestion, there we go. We can go to that fifth suggestion, see it, and see more information about it. So our detail page is now working. So I think we'll leave it off for here, or leave it off for now on this because we're, we're right where we need to be. We've got the index page working, we've got the detail page working. Now we can move on to the create suggestion since we don't have that in place yet. And then from there, we'll get on to other pages.